Hi everyone and welcome back to the Brick Buds. Thanks for joining us again. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. This is our Halloween special. Now, I don't look very Halloween-y, so I think it's time for us to get into our costumes. Now, obviously, with my love of purple, I was um, clearly going to be the, the purple witch. I haven't gone for the hat because it comes with the the hair attached and I don't really fancy having grey hair so I've added the broom so it's obvious I'm a I'm a witch. Um Ian's gone a bit overboard with the um Halloween costume and it has really yeah gone all out. So there you go, he's a werewolf. Um Leah has dressed up as her favourite character so she is Elsa. And Hayley, obviously as the littlest, has to be the cutest. Um, so she is a little baby tiger. <laughs> um, it was quite fun dressing everyone up as Halloween. Took me a little while to figure out what everyone was going to wear. And I'm actually going to introduce some of the extended uh, Brick Bod family. Um, because Halloween's quite a special time for my niece. It's um, her birthday a couple of days before Halloween and she's a massive Halloween fan. And obviously with the pandemic at the moment, I can't can't get there to celebrate with her. So I figured I'd bring her to us. Um, so she's dressed up as her favourite, well, one of her favourite um, movie stars from Halloween. This is Morgan. So she's dressed up as Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And we, in fact, last year we managed to go and see that live um, up in London, which was a great night out. Um, so it's a shame to not be celebrating with her this year, especially as she is actually 18. And I can't have um, one of my lovely nieces without the other. Um, so we've also got Jenna, who um, loves cats. So she's got the, the nice um, cat t-shirt on there. Nice and Halloween-y and some good Halloween-y legs as well. So now we have the extended family. I think we can start our episode. So I promised today that we would be doing a comparison between the previous haunted house and the new fairground haunted house. Um, so you can see the old haunted house in the background there. Um, and I'll go through that one first, I think, just because we've obviously gone through the, the newer one more recently. Every year at New Year's, um, my husband and I buy each other a Lego set. Instead of getting it at Christmas like most people would, we get an extra present. Seems like a good good way of getting in more more presents. Um, and they tend to be the bigger sets. It started with the um, Creator Expert Cafe Corner um, for me. And that's where my love of modulars began. And so I was very torn the year that there was a modular, but also this building. Um, because it wasn't a modular, it wasn't that year's mod modular at all but it was a building and it was beautiful and I was so excited to get it that I I had to I had to bump the the modular from my request that year um, and ask for this one instead and I could see this sort of being um, at the far end of our modular sort of street as that that creepy house on the corner that everyone's worried about so I thought it, it still fitted in with the theme um, but it wasn't part of the modular line um, so I did ask for this and I don't regret it. Um, so I'll just move everyone out of the way and we can have a closer look. Right, so that's a bit of a better view of the whole thing for you. And I've also brought in this um, fence piece that came with the set. So it's set 10228. It's also called The Haunted House. Um, and it's from the Monster Fighters line. It originally retailed for about £150. It now goes for about 270 um, and that's used. Um, so it came out in 2012. So the modular that year was the town hall, but I'd only actually built three modulars by that point. So I, I had to choose between this and the Grand Emporium, the pet shop or the town hall and this. And this definitely won because it's just um, so beautiful. So it's Lord Vampire's haunted house so that's him there 
and it's got some glow in the dark um elements so these ghosts are glow in the dark um and possibly these faces yeah the faces on the the minifigures are also glow in the dark so you've got lord vampire um his bride there Um, the two ghosts, a monster butler, and a, a demon chef, which I think is possibly my favourite. And yeah, I like this um, fence detail because it means you can um, start to set the scene a bit bigger than in the new haunted house. It's got a fence around the front but this I can I can bring it out if I wanted I can put it to the side I can I can put it anywhere in my Lego city and use that fence as the starting block for a, a bigger scene so I could extend the fence round um, and I've got loads of space to play with then because um, you, you're gonna have a lot more at the front of a haunted house I feel no one's gonna build nearby so you don't need to conserve space and I guess that's the difference between this and the the drop ride because it is just a ride and um, they are conserving space theme parks don't have as much space as maybe old mansions do the biggest thing i think is different on this is there's a lot of windows again like the the newer um one but every single one of those windows is slightly different so you've got different sticker in detail some of them have the flaps some of them don't some of them are boarded up, some of them printed boarded up. Um, and they're just, you've got smaller ones at the top. They're all over the place, but they are not repetitive at all. Um, you've got these heads on the um, pillars there, which are the same, same head as the, the demon um, chef, which I think just really add to the spooky level of this and that's the difference here is this is a spookier set this isn't a come along and and be scared by the ride this is a don't even go in this house it's super scary kind of um building um and it's got that dilapidated state to it all the shutters are sort of broken it's boarded up we've got um move this out of the way the steps are kind of falling apart same on the, the far side this entrance way those steps have, have fallen apart so it's it's very believable um that this is a haunted house and no one's going in there it's obviously not as tall as the the new haunted house um but i don't think that um takes anything away from it the new haunted house is only tall because it needs to be for that ride um if you take that that tower off then it's it's pretty much the same height and I'll show you that at the end. I'll put them next to each other. Um, so it also opens up like the, the new haunted house. Um, just in a sort of kind of book fold as opposed to um, two different parts. And I think that actually makes it easier to display. You could have it like this, um, open backed. And then the, the fireplace moves around um, to make that chimney sort of make more sense. So yeah, you're unlikely to display it in your city like that, but you you pu put it together. Um, I don't know, I, th I just kind of feel like it's easier to move about because it is just the one side that swings open, so you can hold it closed a lot easier than the two two sides of the other one. Um, there's quite a lot of detailing on the top here that um, is uh, actually missing at the moment. Um, that's not part of the dilapidated state, that's just the fact that this set was in storage and I've rebuilt it from... Um, 2013 is when I first built this set so it's been sat in a box for seven years and some of the pieces have, have broken off and um, you'll see as we go through that there's some bits kind of missing which is a shame and I will order some new parts to replace those um, but at the same time because it is that haunted theme, theme the sort of rundown state you you can get away with it oh broke off the chimney like I say it's falling apart so I'd like to give you a bit more detail on the inside.
So I'm going to have to change up the camera angle again to do that, I think, and probably go handheld, actually, I think. So here we are at that fireplace, and you've got that really nice ship in a bottle printed piece there, which I kind of feel is like a nod to what's to come, because um, they didn't know they were going to bring out that ship in the bottle set, but it, it goes quite nicely with that. You've got your kitchen over here, where you could have a cook up with that demon butler. Um, so everything you need, um, fireplace, or it's not, sorry, not fireplace, stove and some pots and pans. You might be cooking a, a nice snake there, maybe. Um, lots of ingredients. And in fact, this is the the front door here. It comes in this way. So you've got the, the porch and then the door in. Not really sure that there's enough steps there, actually. And you come straight into that um, kitchen. But it... I think they were going for the aesthetic from the outside more than realisticness there. This side of the fireplace is a little bare. Um, they've only really got the the staircase and then the door to the the porch as well. So it could do with a bit more, I think. If we go up a floor, you've got um, Lord Vampire's writing desk there. Um, no stool, though. Maybe he stands up to write, but you've got um, a nice little quill and ink pot. And then you've got the, the little table with a drink on um, as well. Oh, actually, you've got some good um, pictures on the walls here. There's a lot of details, and they're all crooked, um, which bugs me a little bit. But at the same time, I, I like to do it exactly how it says in the the pictures on the instructions because I'm a perfectionist. Um, and so that's uh, the same head that Ian is wearing for this Halloween special. Over the other side you've got a rather short looking bed. Um, I haven't actually checked whether he fits in. I'd say it could could do with another rung but obviously but because this is a a folding build it needs to be short to fit in. You've got your wardrobe, a couple more pictures. So there's the the butler. There's Lord Vampire on the side. Um, I'm not sure who that other one is behind the plant. You've got some lights on top of the bed. And <laughs> that white thing above the bed is actually um, some antlers. But unfortunately, one of those has snapped off, so you can kind of get the idea of it from the one. There would be two of those going sort of opposite directions, so I'm going to have to buy some more of those to to finish that off because it it definitely frames the bed quite nicely. And then you've got a printed piece down here, um, which is a a heart in a glass um, sort of cloche thing. You know, just in case you get a little bit hungry in the middle of the night and you're a vampire, I guess. So over here, um, there's no stairs up, but if I close this up a bit, there's a hidden sort of lever to pull, and down it falls to reveal that secret staircase. I'd say it's more a ladder. Not the easiest to do one handed. But it does fold out more than that, I believe. Yeah, here we go. So that allows you access to that top floor. So on the top floor we've got quite a lot of sort of attic items. Nowhere near the number of artifacts and things that you've got in the um Manor von Baron. But enough to make it believable that this is what's in their loft, so um, yeah, just kind of old bits of junk. And the same again, this side, you've got a nice gramophone there and some records, a bone in a jar and a skull. So it's not it's not as densely populated um, with sort of interesting things as the other one. But it feels more cohesive. You've got the, the ghost at the top, a little spire there. So here they are, side by side, two haunted houses. 
and they both have their own plus points um i think if you look at the main builds so ignore that tower on the second one they are kind of equal height you've got a much steeper roof on this one this kind of feels better to me this feels too grand um, for a haunted house and it doesn't look run down at all it's well maintained um, this one you know what you're going to get this one isn't as obvious the details on both are amazing there's I can't fault the details um, architecturally as well so all of these tops and they're very similar actually these um, tops of the windows on both um, you've got the the loopy bits on these which you don't have but then you've got a lot more sort of straight lines and sort of frames and um, these are very flat windows here but then you've got the framing around here instead um, you've got your straight um, pillars here whereas here you've got a lot more detailing there I'm not sure which I prefer these were a a pain to build if I'm honest um, because trying to get them all straight kind of killed my fingers so I may have to side with these ones especially with the fact that it's got these um, scary heads at the bottom I really do like that detail I think the colours on this one are definitely preferable I just I don't like that green um, it's just not it's not appealing to me this this definitely is better You've not got any striping effect on this one, um, really, or a small amount, sort of between the floors, but nothing fancy. Um, it's hard to turn around when you're trying to do it one-handed. The spikes, I think, are fancier on here for sure. I love the balcony. Um, although it's not a, it's not an accessible balcony it's not like there's a door but i just think it makes this porch really grand um which you don't have in that one as much so have a quick look at them both opened up i mean yes there's a lot of little details in here and yes there's the the drop ride element and you've got a light brick um and you've got the really fancy organ which is my favorite um, but this one tells the story better I think this one's a haunted house this one's just a, a mishmash of confusingness um, and it just bothers me I love the build I enjoyed making it it was epic um, it looks beautiful but a little bit ugly coloured um, it's got that nice interactive drop tower but it's just not as good as the original haunted house definitely the winner for me is that original one. Um, I was way more excited about getting the original one than I was about this this newer one. Um, and it's just so much more charming and haunted. This one's just like a, a house that they've turned into a, a theme park ride and tried to make scary, but isn't scary. This is. This has got a vampire that lives in it, obviously. How could that not be scary? Why would you go to a house where a vampire lives? Yeah. It's, it's definitely that one's a winner for me. So, I mean, what do you think of these two houses? Which would you say is worth more to add to your collection? I mean, currently, this one's the cheaper option. Um, because you can't get this one anymore and it's, it costs a fortune on the secondary market. But if you if money was no object and you, you could only add one to your collection, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. If um, this has piqued your interest in this one and you want to see more details about the inside of the newer one, then do go check out that video where I go through the inside of that one in a lot more detail. And don't forget to, to like and subscribe so you don't miss an update. And also, the last thing I need to say is Happy Halloween! So now we're off to do some trick-or-treating and I know which house we won't be visiting. I know I like this one best, but I'm not going anywhere near it. So we're going off to, to see Man of One Baron and see if they've got any sweets for us. And we're going to leave um, that haunted house with the actual proper um, ghosts and ghoulies in it well alone.
Whereas I'm sure my Halloween loving niece will be right at home in there. Although I'm not sure her sister's brave enough to follow her. See you later.